Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. The Democrats are in Boston, and Ronnie Eldridge is here on City Talk. Opening night of the convention, Bill Clinton gave what will come to be known as a classic of convention speech making. Perhaps not Mario Cuomo's City on a Hill speech, delivered two decades ago, but a rhetorical powerhouse. Hillary Al and Jimmy weren't bad either. Joining me to talk about the Democrats and party conventions and John Kerry, his personality, his principles, his presidential prospects, is Ronnie Eldridge, my colleague here at CUNY TV, host of Eldridge and & Company, and fellow political maven. Ronnie. What? <laughs> Last night, Bill Clinton, speech. What did the speech say to the American people? What does it tell us about the campaign? Well... You know, frankly, I mean, I thought he was great. He's always a great speaker, and he's a great presence, and he enjoys it so much. That's what is the key and the to humor. it. He, he was just, just loves so it. into it. But, I mean, he, would, he didn't say anything really new. He just said, are things any better for you, and they're not better for you? And look at what they've done. We spent eight years building up, and it's all gone. I mean, did he say anything more than that? Didn't, I mean, was it, wasn't it not the cadence as well, the message? It's the I mean, spirit. He, it was the spirit. I thought they did very well last night, except... <laughs> I keep finding that I'm, I'm listening to all the Republicans and how they talk about Democrats. So then you, you sit there and you watch our fellow Democrats sitting as delegates or the audience. You know, they all look, they're enthused, they're wonderful. I think what's happened is I've just gotten too cynical. I'm, I can't get that spirit anymore. Yeah, you it's really, terrible. I thought that. I thought last night, I thought Clinton was excellent. He was Clinton and he was terrific. But let's, but get, in, let's get into the that. One, Go ahead. The, the, the one who had the gravity and the, the real heart kind of thing, I thought, was, was Carter. Yeah, Jimmy Car Carter. Carter's was very heartfelt. A little bit long, but he, he, he was there. He was very engaged. He, one of the best speeches that I ever saw Carter give. In fact, Al Gore gave a speech that he should have given in 2000. Right. Gore was terrific. I thought Gore was just terrific. And Mrs. Clinton wasn't bad. She doesn't, she doesn't have the personal communication skills. The just the connection, right. the engagement, but she that was that was a pretty tough speech, right. and you know, like it's a interesting, crowd you know, um, it's not the convent, it's now a showcase, really. It is, and they just line up the speakers, and the speakers speak. And I watched it on C SPAN, I mean, I was watching practically all day. They have a lot of press conferences, me too. their coverage yeah, me is too. so interesting, it was excellent. but it's fun because it takes you back into what's going on in sure. Boston. There's sure. so much more going on than just the planned television programming. And I thought that was, you yeah, know, Yeah, let's step important. outside the convention for a moment because you interviewed Leslie Kagan two weeks ago. It was very interesting. The day that your uh, interview right, was aired, they made the accommodation with the police department yeah. on protest. In Boston, the way they've set up that free speech area looks like one of these Afghani or Iraqi prisons. It's, it, it's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, it's this great big cage. I saw it. We were there on Friday of last week just on some uh, other stuff and it is really bizarre but I then you heard that there was a big march through Boston and I wondered if those people had a permit or if they were just marching because what I gotten from the television is that they're boycotting that cage mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the protesters are finding other things to do so it was a, a question. I don't know. It's an interesting question. Did they have a permit, and did they just march that way or not? Okay, let's, let's look at, in another sense outside the convention. Usually in conventions, the other party hides. They stay home. Yeah, they give the one guys, party right? the spotlight. But the stakes are so high here. We've got Dick Cheney campaigning. We've got instant analysis coming out of Boston. We've got Rudy Giuliani. This is different. And you had the DNC where they've got their whole, what is their logo? They had that on C-SPAN. I forget what it is. But it's, it looked for a minute like a democratic organization, right? And they're rebutting and arguing. Um, that's fine, I guess. I don't know. I think politics has gotten, the whole campaigning has gotten so staged, and I think that's what I'm missing, because I remember, I'm old enough to remember, 
other times when a convention was really a convention. Okay, let's go back. When it was brokered, when you didn't know really what the outcome was. I mean, after all, what is this but a big party? And that's all they seem to be doing is having large parties and speeches. Oh, but wait a minute, Ronnie. Come on. You don't think that Clinton's speech last night, to get back to the Clinton speech, in a sense, set the Democratic message? Oh, he yeah. talked about oh, it did. send I me. I mean, right. again, it, it did. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying it's not really a convention. It's, it's, a, it's a campaign tactic now. I mean, it's a different strategy. It's not nominating a candidate because okay. we know who the candidate okay. is. Okay, you're talking about... It used to be the business okay. of the party. Okay, let's talk you know? about... Okay, you want to talk about this. No, I, I don't. It's just no, fascinating because there is no party anymore. Okay, let's talk about that. Yeah. You've been a delegate in more than one convention, in fact, played a prominent role in the 72 convention. Why don't you talk about your experience in the conventions and related to the current convention? Well, I worked for John Lindsay in 72. I had been at City Hall and then I was working on his campaign and I was designated as a member of the platform committee. The platform committee members are designated earlier before primaries mm -hmm. and there were primaries then. Uh, but the standing committees, the platform credentials, get people assigned to them early. So the platform committee started meeting in February, I guess, and we traveled around and, and did a lot of meeting. And then we had a whole couple of days of a conference in Washington. And that platform, I mean, that was the year. This is McGovern, Nixon, Watergate. Supposedly, right. All the, the liberals did the party in, according to the, regu the other people in the party. And well, I've never you? recovered it. I guess, I don't know if it was the platform. I guess, I don't know. I guess we did. What, what were the big <laughs> fights? What, were, what was the argument There was a fight about Democrats. everything. There weren't that many fights. I mean, we had Vietnam. I mean, we had Army. We were coming off of that. Uh, I remember in the platform committee, we had a fight about public housing. <laughs> Ken Gibson was the chair of the housing division. Former Ken Gibson was the mayor of Newark. Newark. And um, members of the committee wanted that to be that people who lived in public housing projects ran the projects. <laughs> it was all about empowerment, I guess. And it was returning it to the people. It was a very different age. And it was more about public stuff. And the gay, I, I don't know if there was any gay stuff there. But I remember... Um, three o'clock in the morning they're having big fights over it, especially this housing plank and um somebody's sitting there wittenstein what was his name ben wittenstein is that his name ben wittenberg uh, wittenberg wattenberg. wattenberg he's sitting next to me he's a conservative guy he, he is moaning and groaning about how the democratic party is burying itself with all this nonsense discussion um and they did no they did but they had but it was participation okay right now it was a lot of participatory now have you heard anything about the democratic platform no i hear it's something like 30 pages it's supposed to be very good uh but i haven't heard anything about it no because they have meetings and the most interested people or invited guests come and testify i mean they had open hearings around but i don't think anybody paid any attention because i think it's interesting in the party is that even people who are disagreeing aren't saying it okay you know, they want because they are so the, the united. Target okay. Is Bush. Okay. Your second experience, the, your last experience, and your second experience as a delegate was in I the was last a delegate convention for Clinton. in '92. The last convention right, in New York. Right. That was in New York. Um, and that, that was interesting, but that too was really already decided. And I was just a member, and it was '92, so I was already in the city council. But, you know, I was always on the outs with the Democratic Party in the city and state. Right, right. And so I was on the outs there. I did sit next to Ann Northrup, and I helped her make all these little red symbols uh, for ACT UP or for AIDS, HIV AIDS. But um, I didn't get a sense of participating. I was already in my uh, waning days of enthusiasm. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. In, uh, in the 72 convention was interesting. It was in Florida. The New York delegation was staying at the Diplomat Hotel, which is really up higher. Uh, but we ran, the women ran a campaign for Sissy Farenthal, who was then from Texas. Right. Uh, for now, vice was that president. The, was that the Shirley Chisholm election or was that in 76? That was, Shirley Chisholm was, was that year, I think. Okay. Yeah. And um, we had a great time on the floor because they nominated Eagleton, if you remember, and then, then he dropped out and oh. we went... Um, but it was, that was fun because the women were all organized and there was something there and we had a big caucus and we really made a big fuss on the floor. Okay, so the conventions, I mean, clearly they've changed for a variety of reasons. Number one, nobody wants to take a chance anymore. They're all scripted. They're, they're all uh, choreographed. And they're basically well, the not seven... conventions because they're primary. We've replaced it with some, I mean, I think the McGovern Commission came in after the 72 convention. Right. 
and it changed. No, it came after the 68 convention. 68, but it hadn't been fully developed, right? I don't remember, but it's, there were different rules. There are different rules, and there are more and more primaries, and it's more and more expensive to run. And, and, more and, and more the decisions it's made earlier and earlier right, to a certain right. extent. So, so they, you've already got control of the convention by the candidate and dictating. I mean, uh, the commentators have made a lot, a big, a lot of talk about who, who's controlling the speeches and that they have to be vetted, and mm -hmm. which means they have to be looked at. By right, other and then people. and part of the vetting presumably is you can be negative but not too harshly. It didn't negative. work. I mean, they I don't, don't think anybody do last goofy. night had their speeches approved. No, and in fact, they were they were fairly harsh were in their criticism, speeches. but they weren't, you know, they weren't of uh, Whoopi Whoop right. Goldberg. Well, they're talking about the speeches that they're giving to the lesser known people that uh -huh. they're giving time, don't you think? Yes. And that, now, what does that mean? You get up. What always impressed me was that you get up and you're talking. If you're not one of the keynote speakers or the, the big speakers, you get up and you talk and nobody's listening because sometimes there's nobody that is on the floor. Or they're right. all talking and moving right. around. Right. I've been to other conventions. Jimmy and I flew out to California with Mario Cuomo when he gave his speech. In 84. In 84. And so we read that speech and we talked about his speech on the airplane. And that was the Jerry Ferrara thing. Right. And that was also very exciting. And I, we went over to her suite before she gave her speech. And it was an interesting, exciting convention. But so much of what gets done in these conventions is behind the scenes. Um, even then. Well, even, I mean, now the vice presidential pick, there's not even suspense about that. No. Uh, Edwards right. was picked a couple of weeks in advance. I think a good tactical move on their part, getting him out there, giving yeah. Kerry, I think, a jolt of adrenaline right. and, and, and right. uh, charisma, if you will. One of the best conventions I went to was with Jimmy, uh, to the Republican convention, when George Bush was nominated. And, and, and was it that? No, it was George the father. Okay, in 88. And it was fascinating. We went to all the Christian right meetings and you're seeing people with their flags and their religious symbols. And the, they, I knew the women who were running the um, choice plank for the, mm -hmm. the platform. In those days, there was still a debate about whether you were going to take a strong stand on abortion or right. not. And those were interesting. That was really fascinating to be. So in a sense, the, the traditional function has been superseded by sort of this media jumping off stage. Everybody's talking about bounce here, you know? Uh, yeah. That well, the it is. They're going to get a message. Is right. it enough? How much do you get? Right. What do you need? Right. Kerry, it's very peculiar if you look at the poll numbers. The president's approval rate had plummeted. It is now stabilized at only 50 percent, but people still don't know John Kerry, and they're not sure about him. They don't know quite what he stands for. So this convention, even though staged and choreographed, if he doesn't define himself and the ticket and George Bush now, they could be finished. No, know, I don't no. really understand all of that. I just don't understand it. I, what do you have to know about John Kerry? He came, he, he, he went to good schools, he came from a, a family that um, hobnobbed with richer people than they were. He, he, um, his father was in the Foreign Service, he has a large family, I guess there are a couple of brothers and sisters. Of course, part of that is that we've known Peggy Carey forever, his sister who lives in New York and has been very active in city government and, all, and different issues. Um, he then, and he was politically ambitious, he, went to, he ran for office, he lost sometimes, he, he held office, and he went to Congress. I mean, he's liberal. He certainly evidently has the best rating on the environment. You, he's done all these yeah, things. Yeah, but you know that. His does big the public problem, know that? Well, because he's trying, in some cases, not to be so liberal. But his big problem, I think, in defining himself was his position on the war. And that was a terrible mistake. Well, that, but that, uh, that they, I do not understand how he voted for that resolution. But clearly what, what Kerry has to do is demonstrate that he is tough on terror. And if he does not do that, I think that but he I don't loses know what does that mean being tough on terror what what does that mean everybody I, says okay. that but I don't know what it means okay, what I does think, it mean I think I think what it that means what the candidate defines it to mean I think in Kerry's case it would be what Mrs. Clinton's been arguing and that is homeland security give the cities that are under threat money Give the firefighters money. Don't cut the well, cops' Well, he's done program, that with the firefighters. He had the firefighters support. They campaigned with him through every primary. You always see the firefighters right well, there. Well, no, I'm trying to I answer mean, the question. What I'm saying is Go I ahead. think that's a phony issue that's been raised by the press. I really do. I don't see that. Well, who are the... Okay. And I think the press Go ahead. is finding it difficult. There is so much press and so much attention to all this because there's so much television. 
I think that they're finding it difficult to follow campaigning these days, and so they make these things up. I really do believe that. I think there are two issues that are major concerns. Wait, let me concerns. summarize what you're saying. This is a bit interesting critique. You're saying that Kerry has been presenting a coherent message, but the ADD among the news media has uh, not presented it to the yeah, American public? I mean, public? he's tied with an incumbent president or a head. Yeah, but the incumbent president has had three of the four of the worst months that an incumbent but, president's but the, had. But he's had three years, or three and a half years. He's an incumbent president, and he's tied with a, with a challenger who came out of a lot of bruising primaries. Um, Al Gore won by 500,000 votes. He won the election. The direct, In terms of the popular yeah, right, vote. By 500 votes, 1,000 votes. Do you know anybody who voted for Al Gore that's going to vote for, for George Bush? No, but I mean, that may be uh, just because and my circle of friends know, is enlarging. Don't, don't forget, we I'm a survey researcher. Don't we know, research. know, use some common sense, common oh, okay, sense. Okay, okay. Common don't sense. we know that academic. some people who voted for George Bush are not going to vote for him again? I don't know. Maybe they, it's the same thing, and we're locked right down the no. middle. If you look at the polling. If, I don't care about the polling. Oh, you don't care about I know. The you're polling. a poller, and I'm Please. an instinctive, intuitive person. <laughs> nice. Nice. I don't play I this intuitive I think that John stuff. Kerry's going to win this election by a very respectable Why? margin. Why? Give me some evidence. Because I think people are not happy with the economy. Who's people? Who are you voters, talking to? Voters. Yeah, how many people have you talked to in Wyoming? I've only talked to people in Illinois and other states that I've been in. Okay. I want to go to Wyoming. If I could talk to them, I would convince <laughs> I know, them. I know. No, I understand. Go uh, ahead. But, I, but I, even your polls say the major issues are the economy and the war. Right. And, so. and terror. But Tara is part of the war. No, I mean, no, it, I understand It's a very that. fine line. But, um, th but it seems as if you've got a... And, a, I, and somehow this Tara thing, I don't know what we do about it. It would be interesting to do a study or to go back to Israel or see, see how people live with Tara there. You know how you, um, you read report, you, something happens in New York... Well, it's not good for 9-11, but something happens someplace, and then when you're there, it's not nearly as big as it... Is that sounded when you read about it in the paper? Well, wait, wait a minute, Ronnie. You're I'm not, not saying that terror isn't, but I'm saying we're going to have to learn a different way of living. We can't have cages and cops in riot gear for our whole life. We just can't do it. Well, I, but the talk to, excuse me, I mean, I don't want to sound as a defender of, of anyone, but uh, tell that to the people who drove the planes into the uh, World Trade Center. No, it's the people who were on the planes. Bottom. I mean, it's the people who were... But there are a lot of people who are in that World Trade Center that don't believe that we're really doing it the right way. I mean, we've confused so much in everybody's minds with terror and Iraq and, and what we're doing. So I'm... Okay, let's, 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 let's bring this to, to, into a sharper focus here. You've got the 9-11 Commission released its report at the end of Follow it quickly last and week. do what it says, right. Okay. It seems as if Kerry immediately adopted the report and used it, and the Bush administration a little bit more hesitant, but they're moving in that direction. So clearly, both see the, the tactical importance or strategic well, importance. Well, I'm of not this. saying it's not important. Please don't misunderstand okay. me. I mean, I think we need a lot of money in this city. We need to do a lot of different things. I'm not quite sure every time I take the Lincoln Tunnel to visit one of my kids uh, how safe it is going through that tunnel and how it easy it would day. be to blow up. And what, what kind of security precautions do you see around there? Unless they got something hidden, there isn't I'm any. I'm hoping. I know. I'm we keep saying that. I do the Stations of the Cross every time right. I come into so, the Senate. So what is that all about? I mean, there are gaping holes in our protection, and I'm not saying anything about that. I mean, I agree with that. But doesn't John Kerry have to deal with those fears? He has to get more money. Yeah, I guess. He, everybody does, but I think you deal with that fears by presenting yourself as a very thoughtful, strong person. Well, I think going back to the Clinton and speech... And I think, unfortunately, he presents himself as being aloof. Okay. But okay. I don't quite know why. Okay. Let's, let's talk about... I want to go back to Clinton because I think Clinton said some, some themes here. He talked about strength and wisdom not being competing values, constantly contrasting Democrats and Republicans, Kerry and his opponent. Clearly, his finessing of the Vietnam issue was, was quite, quite graceful. adroit That's and great. graceful that he said that three President Bush, Vice President Cheney, and himself had the opportunity to serve and chose not to, but Kerry said, sent me. And then in one of his, say, always almost like Southern black preacher, 
he, he repeated the mantra, send me, send me, send me, and provided an imagery of sort of the leadership of the captaincy. I think this military record is certainly going to be an, an important well, look element. Look at, the, to at this. the minister who was on the crew. I mean, right. he was, that was exciting and wonderful. And I thought that uh, Carter made that case also. I mean, Carter was very eloquent, I thought and more um, from his heart and, and you felt from a soul. I mean, and he also said the, country, the soul of the country. I mean, he was a very thoughtful man and here he had a military background. Nobody got killed when Carter was president. You think that was one of his problems? I don't know. But um, it, there are other ways to battle terrorism and there are other ways to live in this world than the way I think that the Bush administration has done. And I think that's what hasn't been totally delineated, although he tries to. But the press doesn't give you a chance. I'm, uh, I'm very down on the press these days, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, I also... Talking about the press and waiting for things to happen, Teresa Hines Carey is a woman who is very engaging and very interesting, but she walks to that line of loopy and over the top, and everybody's, all the people in the media just waiting for her to do something, and she did it the other day when, with her famous <laughs> Up Yours. Or you Up know, Yours right. or Shove It, she said. What, yeah. One of those. So <laughs> what, what, can, what can we expect well, out Dick of Dick Cheney that? said, you know what he said. Yeah, so. but, but this, is, this, this is First Ladies. I mean, is this going to be a different type first, of First, first Ladies? Yes, and let's get rid of that title, First Ladies. The I'm hell sorry. That mean, I'm first sorry. Ladies. Okay, what do you I want mean, to call it? The, it's the wife of the president. The wife of the president. Who has an opportunity. Uh, to do some very valuable things. I mean, to call them first ladies. Oh, okay, you know, pick on just, me. No, pick I'm not picking me. on no, you. No, I'm no, picking on our culture. Okay. All right? She's fine. She's great. She's interesting and she's quirky and she looks at things differently and she uh, doesn't have that campaign cadence yet. She may get it. I don't know. I hope not. Yeah, but she's a, is there a loose cannon? Can, it, can, can, that, can that damage or sink a campaign? If Hillary Clinton can get on television and deny that anything, I mean, I don't, now I'm getting it all confused, but look at what happened to her. She's just soaring and what they've been through. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not an average citizen. I used to think that was my strongest political talent was I would say to somebody, I don't understand what you're talking about. And if I don't understand what you're talking about, then I don't think a lot of other people right, are going to understand right. it. But I react differently to when people say things. So I love the way John Kerry treats his wife. Nothing oh, think, is inappropriate. Oh, I, well, I think that's a very modern, very good, wonderful thing. But wait a minute. I mean, in fact, I mean, I don't know. I, I she don't also see has a billion dollars. Oh, please. Does I, add to we're the, really off. Man, we're, I mean, we're Donald really Trump, off the subject Donald now. Donald Trump doesn't, he doesn't even have a billion dollars. He gets away with everything. That's right. And she's and, a woman, and, and so Trump she's not going to get wants it. to fire him. Maybe that should be one of uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, I Kerry's I slogans. Fi you're fired. Yeah, I don't like to even talk about Donald Trump because he's such a... But anyway. <laughs> well, you, well, you, well, you're talking about anything anyway. We, um, we might as well. But wait a minute. Let's, wait, I just let's, want to let's go, go back to these ladies. conventions for one okay, minute, all right? I, I just think a convention works when, when there are specific issues that are debated within a party, and I think that's a very healthy debate. And people are really energized by that debate well, and feel free. Well, that's but we don't the do that anymore. That's Forget right. That's what that. I'm saying. And Forget unless about that. unless that happens, you as an individual delegate really have nothing to do at a convention. Okay. So you're an audience, and that's what they were last night. They were a great audience because they were all kinds of different people, and the variety was really stunning and very exciting. But that's what it is. It's an audience now for a staged production and it's going to launch the, the final phase of the campaign and I think last night they did a very good job. Okay, let's, let's, I want to go back to first ladies or wives of the presidents and, and look at the, the, the four couples. I don't know the Cheneys in terms of their personal relationship, but if you look at the relationship. She's a strong woman. Uh, right, oh absolutely and, 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 and a major success in her own right. If you just look at sort of the interactions of the Carries the Edwards and the Bushes, they all seem to have really solid relationships with their spouses and their spouses really love them and there's, there's, there's not a lot of phoniness there. No. And whether one, you know, uh, Laura Bush being more classically the first lady, except, you know, who were the classics. Right. Uh, Edwards' wife appears oh, to be Elizabeth. an interesting she's woman. A wonder, she's very articulate. Medical, right. 
Matt, master's Matt, degrees. Right. I listened, but, she did a lot of campaigning yeah. in New Hampshire, and she was on C-SPAN a lot or different interviews. She was very impressive. She's terrific. So I the like her a lot. So, so the I especially are, like her because she isn't thin and beautifully manicured. You know what? I <laughs> Neither think of I, them are. I, that's, yeah, that's so right. great. <laughs> I think that, that's good. And, 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 now, and Lynn Cheney case, was interesting because Lynn Cheney had a different position than Cheney does on, 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 on gay, gay on marriage. The, oh, gay issue. Uh, that was very the, interesting. You know, yeah. Lifestyle but she was independent. And, Absolutely. And it. You've, got, you've got a collection of wives who are, in some cases, not only the equal They're to, people, but uh, yeah. of I'm, substance and right. caring. And if you're a person of substance and caring, I think it must get very hard to be referred to only as a, as a first oh, lady. Oh, here she goes with this first lady <laughs> Well, that's because stuff. I told you I was just on a book tour with my husband, and I was Mrs. Breslin through the whole tour, and it made right. me crazy. You're, you're, you're not. So you bring your personal biases into this. Forget it. We well, don't do this. Well, that's how you do things. Okay, now wait. Isn't it? What's wrong with bringing your personal biases into I, I, I do it all the time. All right. <laughs> I try to be subtle about it, but we try to do it all the time. So you're really convinced that Kerry's going to, we've got a little bit of time. Kerry's going to win why? Because Give me some good reasons. Because people, the American people are dismayed at what's happening in this country. Meaning? Meaning the war and the number of young people that are killed and, and the, the fear of terrorism. But I think that the fear is going to be reflected in the fact that foreign policy has to be conducted differently and that our relationship in the world has to be different. And the economy. I think that uh, jobs are not what we think they should be. And the difference between the rich and the poor, or the rich and the middle class, we didn't even discuss the middle class. I don't know what everybody's talking about, right. about the middle class. What is the middle class? Is it a poor middle class or a richer middle class? I mean, the middle class is well, America. The, it's not it's the poor or the 1% the who got is, the tax yeah, break. Yeah, the upper class is 1% of, of America. Another line of Bill Clinton's that was quite uh, That he's funny. now in the upper class. Now he's right. in the upper class. And he said, they were kind of mean to me when I was in office, but now that I'm a citizen, they gave me this tax cut. But I thought, are, again, we're, we're a country flourish. of middle class. Right. We so, are. So the, the, and the, the election's going to be. And the middle class values in... are no different from poor people's values or rich people's values. You want your family to be safe and happy and able to take care of themselves, don't you? You get the last word. Yes. All right.